All right, Heard. Clothing is not optional on this side. Although, Caitlin, Mike, and Ryan, the whole cohort of unicorn chefs are planning a special only aprons episode in the future. So it's not that clothing is optional because we don't want to get YouTube to ban us yet again. That has happened. We don't actually know why it happened, but it's happened. Anyway, uh, we've got a great show tonight. Uh, probably the fanciest named recipe we've ever had. So we're very excited about that. Uh, but most importantly, considering that one of the key components of the show is giving back to the community. Blake, what are we doing to give back today? So today, thanks Bryson. So my name is Blake Regan and the charity that I chose to highlight for this episode is the Innocent Lives Foundation. The Innocent Lives Foundation is based out of Florida, USA, and their mission is to help uh, bring child predators to justice, mostly online predators. And it's based on people who are uh, they're a nonprofit organization, 501c3, and using their skills and talents to help, you know, that FBI and police departments are overwhelmed with cases. So these people take it upon themselves with, with the help of donations and support to kind of help augment those efforts and kind of deliver a file to law enforcement. Their mission is to not to be not vigilantism because that doesn't solve anything, right? Uh, but helping lo augment law enforcement capabilities. And if, as you may know, it can cost up to $10,000 to produce one file to bring to law enforcement to help unmask a child predator online. So that's the charity that I chose to support. Blake, is there a Florida that is not in the United States that I'm not There is not, of? but as we may have individuals from all over the world, it's just necessary to highlight that. That <laughs> Florida is in the United States, just in case. Just Venezuela, in Venezuela, just so you know, we're talking about Florida in the United States. We are. Don't yes. don't send money to Argentina, no. United States. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'd love to see what you make at home. Hashtag Unicorn Chef. Share what you make. Do it there. Um Blake, I think you were going to do a little bit more on the Innocent Life Foundation, though. You you actually had promised a match, right? Yes. So I, I will match donations up to, to totaling up to $250 from tonight's show. So I'll put in $250 uh, if, if y'all will meet that. And uh, we can do that right at the end of the show. And hopefully we'll get there. And then also hopefully help raise awareness to help spread to others and just kind of raise up. You know, um, recently this year I participated in the Black Hills Information Security pre-show banter con -a -thon, which was a 24-hour event. I was on help, there. Yeah, to help to, in the morning time. I saw you there raising uh, raising awareness and support for Innocent Lives Foundation. And uh, that's partly where my awareness became heightened from was from Black Hills Information Security. They often support there and kind of finding this, this cause of support. I have two young daughters myself and have um, – I have – family members, you know, uh, friends with kids and, and even to help protect and support your kids. Right. We all you know, need to look out for each other as this world evolves. So, all right. Hey, give me a fist bump. Uh, girl, dad. Boom. Girl, dad, girl, dad. Dad. Yeah. Girl, dad. Mine just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago. And I, oh I, wow, yeah, I talked about it in my diverse set con, uh, keynote the other week. Uh, we have already the question in the chat. How do we donate? So, Wow. Blake is going to post that in the YouTube chat. We'll follow up with it afterward. Um, again, if you want to share publicly, hashtag Unicorn Chef that you have donated, that helps, you know, push all this mission on forward. If you are shy and you don't want to do that, feel free to DM either one of us. We kind of like to keep track of how much we're doing over time. Um, so far, we've raised um, just under $30,000 for various different charities over the year and a half that we've been doing this show. Um, okay, so... Blake, what are you drinking? I am drinking a lovely vintage of LaCroix Mure Pepino, which I believe is great cucumber. This is the 12 fluid ounce version. So it really doesn't fit well in your refrigerator because it's taller than a can, than a normal can. Must be a European thing, right? Must be. Must be. So, How about yourself, yeah, Bryson? What are you yeah, drinking? Yeah, well, I am drinking. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, representing local tonight. I've got uh, my own special edition to this that is from Virginia, which I'll share later. And then I've got the Devil's Backbone Vienna Lager, which is another local Virginia beer. Um, but my own story about LaCroix 
is at DerbyCon in the last DerbyCon ever. I got iced, right? And so ice is like warm Smirnoff. It's gross. It's so disgusting. And uh, I earned a reputation because I, I, I did a whole like performance act with the, the ice that ended with me spraying the front row. Okay. And then so I spoke at AttackCon a couple of months later. And Katie Nichols came up uh, to, she can't ice me because, of course, this is like a government event. So she right. destroyed me. And she made sure to remind me <laughs> in front of everybody, like, you agreed beforehand you would not spit on anybody with your drink. <laughs> and then they just released, uh, Miter just actually released the gif of me doing that at Attack On. So you, if you've ever seen the picture of me and the unicorn, like, cheersing somebody, that is the LaCroix from that event. That's what I was going to, I was going to ask you that question, but you, yeah. you preemptively answered That is it. a LaCroix. Nice. Very nice. And this All is right. my apron that still has not recovered from uh, cooking with Blenster, uh, baking with Blenster last week. Oh, wow. Yep. I, I failed on my bread. I got to redo that one. So I'm sporting the cars. We got Mater on here. We got Fillmore. The fire engine, this is from Cars 1, I believe. Oh, Cars 2, Sheriff. That's Cars 2, I think. I don't know. Uh, Sheriff, was Sheriff Cars 2? It's been a while since I've watched the Cars. I think it's there. Cars. No, it's Cars 1 because that's No, where the Sheriff is definitely in Cars 1. Cars 1 because that's where he meets. Uh... Well, he chases them when they're cow tipping, right? Yes, chases them. Then they wreck the town. Then he has to do the build in the road. Yes, and, all that and stuff. that's how he ends up being there in the first place because that's his community service, which is the cars one plot. Right. See, who has kids here? <laughs> exactly. All right. What I'm are we doing? Tell boil, us what we're doing. Boil the water. Boiling the water. Okay, I've already got that part with my potatoes. Oh man! So we're gonna boil the water because if we're watching at home, we got some time for that to happen, but we can do our prep work, right? So. So a couple things, knife safety. If, if you're not big in the kitchen, but you want to get into the kitchen, there's something, uh, my wife and I actually, we were gifted a, a uh, class to Chopping Block here in Chicago, Illinois. They have a location in Logan Square. And they have one at the Merchandise Mart. And we took the knife skills class. So one of the things they told us was it's called the claw. So if you hold the material like this, when the knife is going like this, it's, you know, you're not, you're not you know, you can look you and talk to fingers. someone. You feel the knife on your fingers, right? Yeah. So we'll do that later. But let's start out with our onion and our tomato. So part of our recipe here after blanching the potatoes, which is the first part, which requires boiling water, we are going to chop aroma tomato. We are going to have one clo clove of garlic. That's half. We have one. We're going to have it. Wait, your plan is to only do one of these? My plan was to do one of these. I did one last time and it was a little, I did two and it was a little overpowering. Challenge accepted. I'm doing two. You're doing two? All right. Yeah. I, I can't. I love garlic too much. I want it pouring out of all of me. I want all everybody right. to know that I was eating garlic. All right. We're going to ward off the vampires tonight. We'll get another clove going here. I'm going to pop, lock it, drop it on some garlic. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, uh, I gave up alcohol about six months ago. But prior to that, very big craft beer fan. I heard you say Vienna Lager, which is nice. I'm a Pilsner fan. I think if I had to say my favorite type of beer, I would say it would be a Pilsner, a true Czech Pilsner. That's Budweiser. No, it's not. Budweiser is technically a Czech Pilsner. No, Czech Pilsner is not brewed with rice. Come on now. No, that's when they mass produced it. But the original recipe from Czech was um, a Pilsner. That's what okay. Budweiser was. I align a little more with like a Pilsner Urkel. Good. A little more. All right. So we're doing the two garlics 100 here. 100% need kids unicorn chef t-shirts. You know, frankly, Victoria, we need... Unicorn Chef T-shirts. Period. We haven't created them. <laughs> I'm going to be working on that. We're going to be coming out with a uh, cookbook of all the chefs' recipes for the past year and a half at the end of this year, with all of the proceeds going to charity. So there will be a Unicorn Chef cookbook um, sometime in the spring. 
So this recipe, so we see the title is named Birdie's Leonidas Potatoes. So my cousin Mike, his nickname is Birdie. Um, I, I can't really get into the reasons why, but his nickname is Birdie. And he was, he's uh, very talented. He's a trained chef, like French cuisine. And then he also does faux finishes, really high-end faux finishes in restaurants and buildings. Um, we go mountain biking, and we went um, camping this year. We went to Kettle Moraine in Wisconsin, and he made this dish. And I thought it was fantastic, and I kept bugging him for the ingredients. And he finally gave it to me. So I got to give credit to Mike for this, but this is something that you can make you know, it's a, it's a little gourmet, but if you plan ahead, you can make a nice dish out camping. You can cook it in the cast iron, which is nice to do. So, and it's a little, I think this, I think potatoes Leonese is Wolfgang Puck's favorite dish, which, uh, so I grew up, my mom and dad both, um, mom and dad both into cooking. My mom a little more into cuisine. My dad a little more into grilling and, and meats and things like that. And so I grew up watching... The Frugal Gourmet on WTTW in Chicago, which was like one of the first cooking shows out there when Julia Child was around. And then just growing up cooking in the kitchen, um, just something that we all did as a family to kind of bond and get together. So I, it kind of just stuck with me. And I've been trying to expand my horizons on different dishes. Uh, one thing I would like to get better at is making soups and curries it's something i don't have a lot of experience with but it's it's a challenge right? two very different things my friend i know very different but just you know kind of um hey so i'm jumping around here but here's a little nice safety so you watch i cut off the ends here which are part of the growing part of this if you take and you cut off if you can see here on the camera and you cut off one flat part now you can sit your onion flat so now when you're trying to to, to um slice it now you're safer where you're cutting off these rings here you can go really safe and quicker and not have to worry about cutting your fingers uh what mountain bike do you ride what knife mountain bike mountain bike so for uh, 12 years i had a gt avalanche 3.0 a 2.0. Now I ride a a pivot, a, a pivot trail 429, and I just I want to get into winter biking. So I got a fat bike. I got a. Uh, they're both American made bikes, carbon fiber. Uh, one of them's the pivots made in Arizona. The frame is made in Minnesota. So winter biking. That sounds uncomfortable. What's that? Winter biking. You know, if you dress appropriately for it. Um, I actually went the other day. It was about 43 degrees. If you get, if you dress appropriate for it, it's, it's pretty uh, enjoyable. So fat tires to get through snow, dress warmly and you can like make it work. Yeah. You get the fat tires. So right now, like right now I'm running at about 17 PSI. They're 3.8 inch tires, 27 and a half inch for snow. You run them about four or five PSI because the tubeless bigger tires can can take that low pressure and it gives you ultimate traction. Ultimate traction. Ultimate traction. Is it, that's, that's what like you Florida want to in the for US. And not traction optimal. is only ultimate. For ultimate. <laughs> so that's always been a sport that I've really enjoyed. I got into it with my cousins. They've been doing it for a lot longer. But uh, just, you know, exercising and getting out there, you know, working in information security or any job can be stressful. And so what I found to be to help me the most is exercise. I like to go before work in the morning, kind of helps me clear my mind. And, uh, you know, helps me a little All right, a little so longer. what are you doing here? We've, uh, we've diced. Yeah, we've got, the, we've got, the onions, what did we do with, onions, with the garlic? I haven't cut my onion. garlic yet. I do not care for the core of the onion, so I always take it out. Why, why don't you like the core of the onion? It's too bitter for me. It's just- When you cook it, it all like blends. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like one of those people that can't have their food touching on the plate. That's me with cores and onions. Is this a Minnesota thing? <laughs> Minnesota, cheese and sprinkles. It's hey. a Minnesota thing. Um, all right. So what are we doing with the garlic? Are, am I supposed to just uh, slice it? 
Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna cut it in half lengthwise. I said hamburger style or hot dog style. Let's go hamburger, a uh, hot dog style. That's having it. Our water is almost boiling. We're gonna chop this tomato. Chop, chop, so chop. We're, it like we're it's boiling hot. our water for the potatoes. Yeah, I'm boiling that right now. Because we are going to blanch them or more of a blanch them. Exactly. So this is actually the first time that I blanched something was when I was running through this recipe last week. I always see it on the Food Network. I've never done it, but it can help you carb it. You know, if you're trying to cook sweet potatoes or potatoes, uh, they can take a long time. So to help cut that down, you can blanch it, which gets the, the process of in, in, in potatoes to break down the starches to start softening it up. And then you hit it with the cold water to kind of freeze it freeze that process. So uh, that same technique is actually my uh, my secret recipe for making shrimp. Okay. Right. So the problem with shrimp, right? Most, I mean, I, I, this is, this is philosophy, right? I don't think a diner, right? I'm sitting there, I'm eating. I don't want to put my hands in a sauce and take out a shrimp and take the no, shell off. I don't. Right. right? That sucks. Yeah. On the other hand, it's the only way that the shrimp stays moist so I don't get a dry, rubbery shrimp. There's, a, there's an in-between that you can do. So blanch the shrimp with the shells on, put them in an ice bath, take the shell off, and then you finish it within the last minute of whatever dish you're cooking. You have shrimp with no shells on, and they are perfectly cooked. I'll have to try that. We got some comments going on here. Mike Ellis trying to ask me where the fire extinguisher is. Oh, well, that's just... He's because he's the one who burned things. Um, it's not smoky in this kitchen. Uh, and it's just my camera and the lighting gives me a romantic air. Ooh, a rust, it's a rustic look, right? Well, that's what I always call my rough cut. Whenever I cut something rough, I'm just like, yeah, it's rustic. <laughs> it's what your grandma would do. Nice. All right, is your uh, water boiling yet? Where are we at? My water is boiling now. Another thing too, folks, that I learned in this class is don't take and scoop up your ingredients on the cutting board like this. Two things are going to happen. You could get pieces of wood off the cutting board. You could cut your hand. Use a scoop here. Use this scoop. You get right underneath it. You put it in your prep bowl. Boom. You're on your way. All right. So potatoes are going in water. Be careful not to, to splash them so you don't get burnt. I know they have reasons that they have a sign that says don't feed the bears is because someone, well, they fed the bear one time and they had to put a sign up after it. So be careful. All right. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> All right. So we've got, um, have you got, so you've got your tomato chopped. You've got your two cloves of garlic have been halved. You halved. You have two halved cloves of garlic, correct? Correct. Yep. Okay. And then we got a uh, one half cup of chicken broth. So I use um, the better yeah. than bouillon. Okay. With the water. Yep. So I'll do yeah, that I would do water. half cup of liquid because that'll help absorb into the potatoes. Um, yeah, I usually just do that in the pan with it. So I throw it in. I add the water. I stir it around. Okay. He picks it up. I've also left my uh, can uh, jar out from the fridge for the last hour, so it's soft. Soft? Okay, so you, you got it. Yeah. So, yeah, so one of the things, uh, we've got some time here. Oh, we got to set a timer here. My bad. I'm going to go five minutes on the, uh, the boil. Yeah, so one thing, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about, uh, you know, in, the, in this information security industry, there's a, what I have noticed is that there's a big push to push out gatekeepers and bring in new people. And I think it's excellent. You know, people that are coming into this field, you belong here. We need you. It doesn't matter what your background is. I'll give you an example of myself. I uh, graduated high school in 2001. I went right into the building trades. My father was a home builder. My uncle, uh, Mike's cousin, had a um, still has a... a large home painting business. 
And I went into the trades, you know, family business. I was good at it. I didn't have a lot of passion for school. Just, you know, and that's just the path that I took. So, you know, I came from doing framing and finished carpentry. Uh, I think I think the time that I decided that I needed to go back to school, because this was in 2010, right? This There weren't a lot of companies that said, oh, we'll look past the piece of paper because you have the experience. So I think it was where I was... I was at a, uh, I worked at a bar called Blarney Island, and this is in the middle of Grass Lake, Illinois. And in the summertime, at the end of the year is when they do all the work to kind of prep it. This is literally an island. So bathrooms are septic tank. They bring in all the supplies. So I know we're cooking, but I, I was standing in a waiters, standing in the septic tank that had been drained, shoveling out solids. And I said to myself, I really need to do something different because this is just terrible. Yeah, no, right? a terrible uh, cooking show uh, conversation. Terrible cooking show. The segue was, though, that, you know, and not to say working hard and getting into it, it's, it, you know, you start out, I started out in help desk, learned strong communication skills, learning technology. Um, I think it's great. There's a lot of companies, um, company that I work for, we have opportunities where we bring in people that are that have experience and have similar skill sets. Maybe not. Maybe they don't have a bachelor's degree. Maybe Wait, they were how in did the, you get started in the in for seven years? How, how, how did you make that jump? Right. You you're you're literally in the situation you're in. Yeah. 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 You make the jump and then help this. How did you do that? So I really, you know, I. I did that by hard work and not giving up and taking each opportunity as a great new opportunity and, and doing the best that I can and learning the most that I can in that position. And, you know, and then, Hey, there's something else that I'm interested in. Hey, you know, I think I really, um, what really gave me a strong info set background was I worked at Motorola solutions and I jumped right into uh, here's, here's how I jumped into there. At the college that I went to, there were a couple instructors that worked at Motorola and they said, hey, we have some openings, you know, for students that are working hard. And I actually turned down my interview at Motorola Solutions. I said, oh, no, I, I just gotten a job. I was working at Auto Trader. I was it was my first corporate job. It was a great work life balance. It was cool stuff. But it wasn't what I went to. It wasn't what I was passionate about. Right. So I, I got this call and I turned down the interview and I called my brother and my brother's like, uh, I think you should call that person back in the morning time. <laughs> so I did. And I'm glad that I did because I really, I got, um, I got a great engineering background and a great experience from people who had been doing this for 25, 30 years, right? That's where I first found that there are people out there that want to share the knowledge and want to share it with new people. And as long as you have a positive attitude and a willingness to remain teachable, the sky is the limit, right? So, so now as, as, a, as a hiring manager and a people leader, I have people on my team all across the globe, I try to identify people that are, you know, I have a couple people who work on my team who haven't really worked in information security right now, and they're absolutely killing it because they have the right mindset and attitude and skill set and willingness to learn. Right. So it, it's seeing those, it's seeing those things, those things that I went through and, and recognizing and Hey, I'm in a, you know, one of the things I worked with, with my manager in HR to change our do job descriptions that said bachelor's degree prefer required master's degree preferred and got it changed to say, bachelor's degree or commensurate experience preferred, right? That's something that I could do to open the door for other people when they're seeing these job descriptions to say that, hey, you know what, if you don't have a college degree, but you've got this experience or you're in the armed forces and you've got, you know, training or let, let's have a conversation, right? Um, and it it's a really fulfilling feeling to to do that and, and make the change and still get good candidates, right? We, we took away the, the, the college degree part and guess what? People are still doing the work. So I think a lot of other people should, should really consider that. Um, let's take these potatoes out of the hot water. How hard was that to get uh, HR to come on board? So I asked where I asked what the base, what the requirement was based on. 
I said, where is this coming from? Is this hard requirements? And, and basically came up is like, no, this is kind of just like what we've always been doing. We've been cutting hands off the ham, right? So, all right, turn the heat down in here, heat down on here. All right, so these are gonna sit in here in the cold ice bath for another four minutes. Oops, I don't wanna do the microwave there. Oops, kitchen timer, what the? All right, so yeah, and that is, you know, the landscape has changed so much from, you know, it's not people hacking firewalls. It's, you know, someone clicked on a link and email again. Well, guess what? That box didn't have protection on it. And here we are. Um, I, I, I just got to ask, you didn't happen to pick the phrase hacking firewalls for a recent. No, I didn't. Okay. Cause that was just the thing that was the, a topic of conversation a week ago. No, I, I I was not able to watch last week, but you know. Oh no, no, like, not with I mean, us. Even a movie Nothing to do with Harrison Unicorn Ford. Chef. Out out in the industry. Out in the industry, right? Yeah. So no, there was a there was a company that uh, um, privately found Oday to a firewall and. Oh yeah, yeah. Them. Oh yeah, to um to Cisco AnyConnect. Yeah, to a VPN client. Yeah, that's nice. I I mean. Where do you draw the line, right? Who is supposed to have an O day? It's yours. You do what you want with it. There's, there's responsible disclosure. I just wanted to no know if you chose that on purpose. Was that a slip of the tongue? Was it like just a, a general like anything, or were it was you just like, a general anything? Okay, was, okay. You know, it was just you were just like, locking oh, yourself into the latest drama. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know what though? If you take those situations, it's always this. It's the same. It's the same formula, a different story, right? It's this isn't fair because this, or I can't believe that someone didn't do this. At the end of the day, people aren't out there to make friends. It, you know, it's it's your your choice to to do what, what you want. We're not friends. <laughs> not everybody is out there to make friends. I know, sad face. Sad face. Sad Too face. awkward silence. Sad face. Well, on uh, my uh, webcast with uh, Justin Ells and, and George and uh, just, uh, blah, 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 John Strand uh, playing in Tactic, we are going to tackle the drama of that one separate from food. Separate from food and not name dropping. I did just realize that I name dropped, but you know what? It's out there in the news. So, so YOLO. All right. So any questions from the audience? Any? Uh... Uh, they asked about your mountain bike. They are uh, just having fun yelling at each other. <laughs> um, this is so this is this is the fun part about these cooking shows is there's what happens here. And then the, the chat is its own like PG-13 R-rated ridiculousness. It's right. fantastic. Right. So we got a minute left on these uh, this blanching. So I want to warm the pan up a little bit. All right. Warming up the pan. Put butter in, I assume. Uh, we're going to do olive oil. Olive oil, olive oil is a base. Right. Put an oil in. Yep. Okay. All right. I got my cast iron. Okay. I have a, I don't know the brand, but I know that it's my grandmother's. It's a 10 inch one. It's, it's Fields. Is that the name? It's an older brand. I, I literally don't know everything. I promise. Okay. Got it. I, what it, can you show? I don't, I can't see what it, it's just a, a Fields cast iron. Oh, okay. Yeah, Erie, Pennsylvania, the old yeah. school. So mine is a, a Lodge, which I love these things. I love like 15 Lodge. Bucks, and everybody's like, oh, I need this expensive cast iron. It's like, no, this works. This is my, uh, my brother got this for me for Christmas. This is my giant Lodge for searing steaks out of my Oh, garden. that looks great. Yeah. That looks great. Yeah. And I think you can pick this up for like 30 bucks. If you're trying to sear steaks, this is perfect because you can fit, you know, a lot of stuff in here. So. Oh my gosh. All right. So we got our potatoes. We got to dry off our potatoes. And we got to put a little olive oil up in here. 
So uh, I mentioned that my... What's up? I said my potatoes are sliced, ready to go. Okay, I got to slice mine. Oops. So this is something I did last time. I didn't slice them thin enough. And I got to... Oh. So guess what? I took your advice and I did not peel them before Blanche. Before yeah, Blanche. so that's, that's a personal thing for me. It goes back to the same thing with onions. I never like to throw anything away. Okay. I, I'm going to use all of it every time. And okay. particularly with potatoes, the, the, the skin holds a lot of the nutrients of the potato. This is true. So let's, we'll, do this, we'll do this safe slice with the potato again. All right. You can My cut off. It is hot. Down Blake, where was the prep right, work? So he did the prep work. He should do all the prep work. Come on, David. Keep up. Come on, David Vaughn. All right. Come on. Come on, Chief. All right. So I got my pancetta here. It's already ready. Get this a little hotter. So I cut off, as again, if you see here, I cut off a little side of the potato. Because then you can lay this down flat like this, and then you can cut your when you're doing this, you want to keep these no bigger than an eighth inch because they will could take longer to cook if they're too thick. And if you look here on this blanched potato, you can see what we were talking about of how it starts to pre-cook. You see that outside is soft and then the middle is still funky. Okay. Onions. I thought you were gonna say you didn't uh, you didn't want to peel the potatoes because you peeled so many in the in the army that you were done peeling potatoes forever. I uh, I fear I uh, was cannot cop to that. I was an officer. They they don't make okay. potatoes. So you were telling people to cut potatoes. Uh, no, I was even like a couple of notches removed from that. Okay, <laughs> got it. Although uh, whenever I was the officer in charge, so it's like a special duty designation. Um, and you have to be on, you know, you're basically on call for 12 hours and you have to patrol all the areas. I would always patrol the cafeteria. It's called the DFAC. And I was, I, I think I'm the only officer who ever did this. I would go in the back of the DFAC and I would make them show me what they were doing. <laughs> they were like, sir, what? And I'm like, no, show me what you're cooking. Because I, I just, one, I mean, it was a personal curiosity even all the way 20 years ago. And uh, <laughs> what else am I going to do? What else are you going to do? Uh, David says he apparently did peel potatoes, but he uh, just threw them in a pot and it peeled them from the spikes in the pot. Okay. I had lots of extra duty as a junior enlisted soldier. David, I do believe you were a troublemaker. Yep. So you guys are making me hungry. Well, out. David, you could cook yourself. A couple um, behind. Keenan is upset that I never peeled potatoes. Yep. Sorry. Um, my wooden spatula. Ah. Yeah, so we'll brown up the pancetta, get that going. Um, I actually, there was no pancetta available to me in the uh, grocery store. I had to just get regular bacon. That's fine. That works. I was Why are you adding it. olive oil if you can just render the fat out of the bacon? That's part of the recipe. That's what I was told. Olive oil kind of helps prevent it from burning as well. Kinda. So, um, yeah, heavier fats and olive oil will give a different um, emulsion, uh, like smoke point. It, yeah, I can. When I, I cooked it last time, I didn't get the. It didn't need to go too high because once you once it starts to brown up, you add in the potatoes and the onions and the. And actually, you add in the onions here. Let me read this recipe real quick. Garlic halves. Place the garlic cloves. 
Yeah. Saute until you see tallow starting to caramelize. Brown the pan. If you notice smoke, turn down the heat. Olive oil has a low smoke point. Hmm, go type that out. Oh, that's me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we did an episode last year on uh, steak where we uh, covered the mixing of the fats with olive oil. Okay. That was the uh, Trish and Chris Via Senor episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so that's, I would love to learn those details of, you know, the different ingredients. I don't, um, there's a lot out there, right? I, uh, I wanted to share this. This is something I think is pretty cool. So these are the two people watching over me in my kitchen. You might recognize one of these people. I recognize one of them. Yeah, Guy Fieri. Yeah, so that other guy, that's my dad. Oh. My dad, yeah, my dad, uh, God bless him. He passed away five years ago. But uh, we, my wife and I have had this picture in our kitchen over our range. Uh, you know, this is probably seven years old. This was at his, uh, his showroom warehouse. And we love to watch diners, drive-ins, and dives together and kind of just see these different recipes. And, uh, you know, we'd smoke, tur we'd brine turkeys, and then we'd smoke them. And so just kind of sharing that there as a little, uh, you know, I've got some pretty good help in the kitchen. So... But definitely something to be thankful for. You know, I uh, one of the things that I learned from my father, work I worked for him for a long time and worked around, um, was was project management. And I didn't realize it until a couple years ago. But I would do jobs. I would bid out construction jobs, and then my dad to help me understand, to help me learn the project management part, he'd always make me print out a blank calendar, write down the tasks that were going on. And then as soon as there was a task change before I could get paid out on my next payout, I had to present him with an updated calendar of the different trades and who was, you know, the plumber's going to be in here, electrical drywall to kind of help get those wheels turning of, Hey, when a change is made, it changes your whole project. It could change the whole timeline, or maybe all of a sudden you need to work on something else while you wait for this other task to catch up. And, um, you know, that wasn't in the Project Management Institute handbook that I had in my hand. It was just on a job site, right? Trying to figure out when, uh, you know, the HVAC person ordered the wrong material or, uh, you know, you failed plumbing inspection or something, if, you know. So I think I learned in a similar way. So the first job I got out of the Army, I worked for a manufacturing company. And the best thing about that, because InfoSec is so abstract, Right. What the hell are we even talking about? Right. right. Data. Where the hell is data? It's just, it's abstract. And how do you put process to data? So it's layered on to something that we can't even see. And I had the advantage of working in manufacturing where you actually get to see the result of whatever you're doing. Right. And I learned a ton about process management because I actually got to understand input to output because I could see it. Yeah, and that's part of it is, is, you know, I think a lot of it is learning hard lessons, right? Like, shoot, I don't want to do that again. What can I do differently? Watch out. I got my dog up here. So what other these. lessons did you learn from the before times that tie to what you're doing now? Um, okay, this is great. So it's the importance of building relationships and having relationships with, you know, I mostly do digital forensics and incident response. And I started my new role. I work for, I work at Equinix Incorporated. And I started that new role in May of this year. So I can tell you that it, it really helped a lot to, that I was building relationships from day one so that when incidents came up, you know, I knew who to talk with. I, I knew how to interact with the team, what they required for a request, what were the, you know, things like that. And, and that is something that um, I actually did a talk on that at Blue Team Con this year, which was the inaugural run of Blue Team Con. And it was called Persuade, How to Persuade, Change, and Influence to Deliver the Blue Team Mission. And it is really based on building relationships and the importance of that. 
because I don't see that come up enough. And so you hear about soft skills, but I don't, I don't see enough emphasis on building relationships and, you know, having that, that rapport with people so that when, if you need to call on them, you know, they're not, Oh, Hey, here's this, here's this jag from InfoSec is here asking for this again. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Um, two, uh, one, uh, I know a retired Colonel from cyber command, uh, JC Vega, who that was his, that's been his entire point is you have to build those relationships because when you have to pick up the phone, when you already have that relationship with that person, it makes it go easier. And then, uh, the keynote that I gave at Sands Hackfest last week, most of it was wrapped around in how to, so it's called get offensive with management and the entire wrapping of it was the soft skills that it takes to be able to speak to management from a personal level, from an organizational management level, from an industry level, all of those people factors, to understanding then how to wrap risk assessment and management. Yeah, and that's it, right? Is I think I heard it. There's a podcast I listened to, No Free Ads, uh, Jordan Harbinger show. And one of the things they say there is dig the well before you're thirsty. Build those relationships, yeah. do that networking, dig the well before you're thirsty. When I heard that, I was like, man, that's freaking brilliant. Why am I not doing that? And so I started doing it and, uh, you know, a little more than I was before. But that was one of the things. So to, to answer your question, that was one of the things that that my I learned from my dad was he could walk into a room or somewhere he'd never been before, make friends with people, you know, it's probably an would have been a really good social engineer, but he used his powers for good, right? But it was having those relationships with people. And when you're working in a, you know, a certain township and you're building homes, it's great to know the village inspector. And it's great to know, you know, the utilities, you know, things like that, right? That, hey, those are all, par all those are all pieces of the machine that, you know, you need to know about and take care of. So, yeah, the, the follow on to that is I tell everybody they should go introduce themselves to the special agent in the FBI that's in their sector. Yeah. There is a local special agent with the FBI who is there to talk to you. Go meet him. Right. I, you know, and that's probably a really good note that um, I probably need to take. And, and even someone said, take them out to lunch, something like that. Go out to lunch with them. Right. They, you know, have that relationship. So when you need it, if you get that, uh, that crazy note on your desktop, Hopefully that doesn't happen. So we're browning our pan. We're sauteing. We should see, hat. We, as Emerald Lagasse likes to say, Wait, our you onions sure and our pancetta uh, and onion? our garlic, they're getting happy in there. We're All sweating. right. I, I, I missed that connection. So we should be throwing our onions and garlic in there. Onions and garlic. All right. All right. Throwing them in. Miss Saute. That. We want to get those browned up. And once those start to brown, we're going to add our, our chicken broth. All right, so I'm a little bit behind you now because I okay. missed the uh, savory edition. Yeah, we can we can catch up. I can turn the heat down a little. Oh, mine mine will get there pretty quickly. What's that, Bryson? That mine will get there pretty quickly. Okay. I got I already got a high heat on the pan because I'm not working with pancetta. I was working with bacon. Okay, because you got the bacon getting crispy. Yeah. So I've been rendering the fat out of it. I turned the okay. temperature up. Probably take me about a minute and a half to get my garlic and onions at the right level. All right. Still fascinated that you don't like the green part of the garlic. The green part? Yeah, I mean, once you uh, saute it, like green, white, it all comes out the same to me. Yeah. I don't know. Some people say uh, cucumbers taste better pickled. Blake, I don't see color. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I respect that. Uh, just I'm sorry. I was, I, that, was, that, was me being, that was me being funny. <laughs> you know, though, I have heard a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, pen testing companies are looking for ways to deliver content with you know, they may have customers who are colorblind, where if you're highlighting things in color, it really doesn't make a difference to them. And then I even heard um, a couple of companies that are doing uh, 
that do live streams are going to start to do closed captioning so they can help deliver content to people who may need closed captioning or prefer that. Or maybe you're, you know, busy on a meeting and you like to read the words, you can't listen. Get up here in this chat. David Vaughn, fish filet, bro. All right, uh, so we are doing chicken broth. Yes. Okay, so we got our sizzling pan. A lot of sizzling going on with that fat and the onions. Yeah. All right. This baby Looking cooking. A little happy here. A little happiness in the pan. We can see there. Happiness in the pan. Right. Happiness in the pan. All right. Take out that stringy bit. So we're gonna add our 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 chicken broth. And we're going to add our tomato. And then we're going to stir that up a little bit. And we're going to let that simmer. We're going to throw our tomatoes on there. Our uh, potatoes, sorry. All right. Okay. Turn this up. Okay, let's put these out right. here. So lay know. these tomato, lay the potatoes out kind of evenly so they get the liquid on them. Hold on, you already threw the tomatoes in? Uh, tomatoes and broth go in because you want to let that simmer. Yep. And then, uh, and then when we do the potatoes, we'll lay them down in the pan here. If you, on the camera there, I got it laid down. All right. And you can add a little more broth in there if you need to submerge in a bigger pan. Uh, sometimes you might need to do a little more broth, but that's kind of just to touch, to, to so taste. So how much do I want the tomatoes cooked down before I put in the potatoes? Uh, I would actually just put in the potatoes on, um, let's see here. Actually just put the potatoes on top right after you do the, the broth and the uh, tomato. Okay, and how how submerged do I want them? What's that? How submerged? Um, like the bottom half of the potato. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna put a little on here, a little more broth in here. Make them happy, a little splash. Whew. All right, I'm going to be starting my additions because I'm adding some things to this on the side to make a full meal. All right. So I got mine going. Okay. I've got a nice boil starting to go with my potatoes. Yeah. And that's one of the things I always like to do, too, is try to clean up while I'm waiting for stuff. A little more broth. I think we're going to end up with three quarters cup broth. Yeah, you just kind of eyeball it to the pan. So... Why I, I we we covered this at the beginning. You explained the birdies part, right? Yeah, birdie. Uh, well, birdie. Um, I don't really know the full details on where birdie comes from. I'll ask Mike, and I get back to you. But uh, Mike's yeah, pretty, that's the part. I want to know why birdie. Birdie. So <laughs> uh, I don't. I can't really say the details on birdie. As uh, that's Mike's business, but Birdie okay. is his nickname between uh, his brothers and uh, his friends that are uh, they're a little older than I am, but all of them call him Birdie. So if I just said Mike's Leonese potatoes, it probably wouldn't sound so interesting, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think just saying Leonese potatoes would have uh, would have done enough. Would have sufficed. I like, I like that. There's another element to it. Yes. Yeah. 
All right. Yep, I hear kids. How, how old are your kids? Hey, hey, special guest, come here, Fiona. Fiona. We might have a, a surprise visitor. I might get one. Of I love guys. surprise visitors. How old are your kids or kids? So uh, Fiona will be three in February. And then uh, we have Gemma. She is, uh, she'll be four months old, December 10th. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Fiona yeah. is welcome to come on the show and say hi to everybody. And we can get some unicorn stickers out to her. That's very cool. Let's see. Let me see if I can go. Uh, let me see if I can go get her. We got happy potatoes are simmering. We're good for a couple. Yeah, I got okay. my potatoes getting happy. I got my other things going. All right. Those of you watching live, you're welcome to throw your questions in if there's anything else. Yeah, I know. Those are some fun ages. Well, four months old, not as much fun. Three, eh, four. Four is a good age. <laughs> Once they hit three-ish to four up, like, bam, awesome. Until they become teens, and then you go back. Oh, there's a dog, too. Hey. Can you say hello? Can you say Hi, hello? Fiona. Over here. Say hello. Right here. Hey, sweetie, right there. You say hello. She's looking at the, the laptop here. Yeah, because that's yeah. where the picture is. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. 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 And there's Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. All right. You know what? That wasn't me. I didn't do anything. No, it wasn't you. You're okay. You're okay. Bye. Bye. Um, I actually oh, think about three months is when I start to see personality. This is my wife, Victoria. Bye. Hi, Victoria. Okay. We're looking good. Bye. Bye-bye, honey. Bye-bye. All right. Turn up the heat a little bit. Yeah, so you'll see when this is cooking, all of a sudden that broth will disappear and the potatoes will suck it up. Yeah. And you did uh, three potatoes, right? I did three potatoes. One yep. for one for each person and one for the pot. Well, thank you for bringing your family on. We always love whenever the family joins this. I think it just adds an extra little something. Yes, a little extra something. It, it's it's like if you just had sparkling water and then you made it La Croix. Yeah, just like that. You just did that, Blake, with your family on this episode. I got another one. I think this is a new flavor, Raz Cranberry. What you know about that? I know nothing about any of these things. I could not even tell you what La Croix I was given um, on, on that episode a few years ago. I'm, I'm just I'm just really excited that Miter turned it into a GIF. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I would always wondered. I, I saw that picture, and I didn't know the story behind it. And I was like, it looks like he's drinking a beer inside a government building. How caused that possible? It was a LaCroix. It was a LaCroix. There we go. Yeah. The story behind the story. That's a VH1 story behind the story. Yeah, but that was so uh, that year, uh, Miter actually asked, they asked me to show up in Unicorn and they wanted me to be a part of, so the way they do it is, you know, have the speakers on the stage for two days and then they do these like video outtakes where they interview them for five minutes and they wanted me to come as a unicorn and be a part of those outtakes. And I was like, I, I'm not hundred percent comfortable with that because there's a difference between me being funny as a part of something and it looked like me like taking away from somebody else. Right. So the only outtake I was a part of uh, was with um, Daniel, who is now over at Snowflake. I can't remember where he was at the time. Um, and we talked to him beforehand and we're like, we like choreographed the whole scene about how I was going to like be a part of it. So it'd be funny, but I wouldn't actually like take away from highlighting Daniel. Coordination. No blue, no blue falcons. <laughs> no blue falcon, right? No blue falcons.
Yeah, and I see someone saying the the buy bubbles. I've I've tried those ones. Um, I Costco has been having a pretty decent mix pack, and it's pretty. I, I drink these during work. Um, keeps me from snacking. I don't know. I'll have one after hockey, maybe. Feel fancy. What position you play? <laughs> All right, so we're getting some action here. Getting the potatoes are cooking down. And we're starting to see that broth and everything reduce. We got our onions in here. And then you'll definitely, so we're going to be finishing this with uh, Irish butter, just like a less than an eighth inch slice off the, the block or butter if you have it, kind of thicken that up. And then you definitely need salt and pepper to taste. It'll need a little salt because there's no real salt in it other than the bacon or pancetta there. Oh, well, mine uh, with the bacon and then the broth already has a good amount of salt. So yeah, I usually you, you can taste broth. it. Like you can okay. just set, set your finger on the top, get a feel for your like it a sauce. Okay, yeah, just a tad bit of salt, just a little. I I like to use the lower sodium broth, the thirty three percent less, because then if you need to add a little salt, you can instead of getting that. Yeah. Well, and the butter that you add also is going to make a difference if it's salted or unsalted. Yeah, the Irish butter, Irish butter will add a little bit of that to its carry gold. But don't don't be afraid to like stick your finger on this, particularly with the potatoes. That flavor will come through on it. So you can just I don't know if you can see this. I'm just like tapping it on there, and I get it, and it's not too hot. Yeah. I mean, don't stick your finger directly in the boiling oil. But it's a good way to get a flavor for this, so you can see what your flavor profile. Out. I like that. Okay, these potatoes are still, uh, they're not, mine aren't cooking so well right now. Hold on. Lay them flat. I have moved on to another local. This is a Loose Cannon IPA. Oh, okay. Also made in the area. Nice. Is that uh, like a harvest ale? Is that a fresh hop? No. Yeah, it's an IPA. Let's see. Um, what does it say? I think my my. If I had to pick a favorite IPA, I would probably say Founders Brewing Harvest mm. Ale. They take those Michigan fresh harvest hops. Yeah, and Michigan. They that wet hop, and it is just hops in a bottle. You can hardly find it, but it is so good. So, so that manufacturing company I worked for, uh, the U.S. headquarters was Michigan. So I've spent a lot of time in Michigan, and I uh, drank a ton of Founders back before anybody else knew what they were. Yeah, they started in 1997. They were founded in 1997, and, and my wife and I, we have family in Michigan. So every time we go through, there by Detroit, we oh. stop through in Grand Rapids and do a meal at Founders or you know have a beer there, like getting a KBS stout on draft was like, I died and went to heaven, right? So I'm 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 kind of using a little technique here to speed up the cooking because my potatoes weren't cooking as fast as I wanted them to. So I just put another cast iron over the top to kind of Dutch oven it. And that seemed to help. Yeah, this dish, this dish can be is, is good on its own. It's a nice potato dish. It can also be served as a as a nice side with uh, any kind of protein you like. Yep. So I will be debuting my other uh, locals uh, when I finally plate for a using this as a side. Ah. Okay. Get that little Irish butter ready. Yeah, when we originally had this, uh, I was scheduled to be on here November 10th, and I emailed you because we were moving, and I was like, I won't really have a kitchen, so thanks for accommodating. And uh, Absolutely. Um, how'd the move go? It went really well. It actually went really well. We're, we're getting situated. My, my wife, is uh, she planned out the whole process really well. We had to have, you know, we had things in the storage unit. We did our 
we did our sell and our buy on the same day. So it was this crazy coordination and she just delivered on, um, just trying to do that and, and do, you know, your full-time job at the same time. You know, you, I'm going to drop something on the floor somewhere. So, yeah. So you're uh, you're in the Virginia area, right outside DC? Yep, yep, just south of DC. Okay, we're getting close. Yep, I am ready to plate whenever you are. So you get where you want to go, and I will be there. Yeah, mine still needs some time. These potatoes are. Uh, I don't know about that not peeling trick there, Bryce, and they're uh, taking a little longer to cook this time. What what trick? The uh, not peeling the potatoes when you blanch them. <laughs> I'm behind you and I'm ready to go. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe potatoes are grown different up there. Yeah, it's possible. Well, Idaho potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your Idaho potatoes are different than my Idaho potatoes. Yes. We'll check it out here. Okay. Now your potatoes coming along. Okay, there. They're getting there. They're getting there. All right, well, we got time. How do, how do you feel about having made the move to InfoSec? You're happy, right? What's that? I said, how do you feel about having made the move to InfoSec? Um, I, I love it. What? I really do. It's, uh, you know, there's always something new to learn. And I really, I really dig the engineering piece. I dig the problem solving. I dig the sharing knowledge with others. And, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting work. Um, it can be stressful. Burnout is real, right? I really focused on, on mental health and, and physical fitness this year, doing the deeper fit and uh, we hack health and, you know, trying to get up out of that chair and get, get the blood moving. It's definitely important to. Well, you said you were playing hockey, right? Yeah, I play hockey. I played hockey twice a week, men's league. Um, or actually, it's adult hockey league. It's a co-ed league. And I play on Tuesdays and Friday nights. So the one, one team's name is Cheapskates. That's my Friday night team. And then the Tuesday night team, our name is League Minimum. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been playing probably for about six years in adult hockey league. And I started playing hockey on a team in high school. So it's a good uh, – I love the sport. It's, a, it's another one of those sports where you can challenge yourself to be better and, and compete and get better and uh, – it's a fun game. What position do you play? So I'll play uh, either left wing. I was a left wing. Up and playing center, right wing. Play offense, really. Yeah. No, I was a left wing. You're left wing. Are you? Yeah. Are you left handed or right handed? I'm right handed. See that right handed shot on the left wing? There's a lot of juicy rebounds, right? I think I was the left wing because I was the uh, weakest player on offense. <laughs> we'll put him up there on left. Is closer to the closer to the bench, right? Yeah, no. So center and right wing were both uh, um, finish born. So like those guys could really play, and then there was me, and so I was there because I had the stamina and the speed. But like my uh, my handling was Your agility weird. and balance wasn't yeah. the best. <laughs> but you could play two hundred foot hockey the whole game, right? Yeah, no, I could play the whole game. I just was nowhere near as talented as those guys who had like grown up with a stick in their yeah. Hand. All right, let me check on these. Come on now. Don't let me down now. Okay. And a little more broth here.
All right. How are we doing yep. on time? We're doing we're okay. We are we are over an hour. We are over an hour. Okay. How are yours doing? You ready? I'm all ready to go. You're all ready to go. All right. Let me see. Uh, let me get a little fork here. Stick a fork in and it's done. Yeah, we'll just make sure we choose the ones that are. Some of them I cut a little too thick, and those are the ones that are. Mm. All right. All right, let me get a, another couple minutes here and we'll we'll be good to go. Any big plans for the uh, the holiday weekend? Uh, I am staying local. My parents are here. Okay. Uh, my brother and his family are flying or flying. They're uh, driving in. So that will be my weekend. Okay. I'm actually taking my brother uh, mini golfing on Friday. <laughs> Is it indoor mini golf or outdoor? Yeah, indoor, yeah, indoor mini golf. Okay. <laughs> Let me get a plate here. He, he really wanted to go golfing, and I've been I've been having uh, shoulder issues, and I was like, dude, we're gonna we're gonna go putt putt. Now is this in? Now I'll tell you a story, and because I think the statute of limitations is up. Uh, my <laughs> my brother and I, when we were we were on vacation, I think we were in um, I think we were in the Grand Cayman, and there was a mini golf course right by the hotel, and we went mini golfing and. We, were, we asked the lady, hey, is it going to rain? Is it going to rain? No, it's not going to rain. Well, you know, two holes in, it started, actually, it was about eight holes in, it started raining. And we're like, hey, can we get a rain check or a refund? It's not raining. No, it was raining. So we went and took a bunch of gravel and rocks and shoved it down the 18th hole, you know, where the ball catch is supposed to be. So we filled it up with, you know, like with uh, with zero two gravel down there that were the decorative rocks. So they had to go fish that out there. Probably would have been cheaper just to give us a refund, huh? Um, I guess uh, vengeance is a solution. So these potatoes, I didn't cook all the way. Okay, they're getting there. They're getting there. They're getting happy. I got some happy ones here. And we're doing presentation too. Oh, I got to do butter. What am I doing? I don't know. You have your carry gold butter on standby. A plate here. I'm I am plated. Right. I'm ready. All right, yours is ready. Give me uh 30 seconds and we'll 30 seconds. And... I will give you 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna just start eating anyway. It's like guys' grocery game. The timer's going off, chefs. <laughs> Hands up. Oh mine actually has a really like 70s look to it. It's hard to explain. You kind of have to see it. What's that? I said mine has a real 70s look to it. 70s look? That wanderlust filter. I again, you'll have to see it to. to I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of it so I can. Come on here, here presentation go. skills. Let's go. Ooh, man, that's a lot of food. I think I'm having Thanksgiving before Thanksgiving. All right, let's get some sauce going on here. Set up my screenshot so we can take a picture of ourselves. There we go. While he's plating, if anybody has any questions, throw them in. Yeah. Besides debating good butternut squash soup. Well, when you get lemons, you got to make lemonade, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's different practicing and then doing it live, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. I know. You did it's great. It's all good, though. You did great. All right. you have, and you have a substantial cheering section here in the audience. Yes. All right. We ready? We ready. All right. Ready. So 
This is mine. How I added to it is I did a Virginia smoked red uh, sausage. Ooh. I browned a bunch of butternut squash to go with the bacon. And then I uh, tossed it with uh, fresh Italian parsley. All right. All right. Look in the camera. Boom. So I did not do the extra fancy stuff, but I did set my potatoes on the side here to allow room for my protein on the side. What's your protein? Uh, tonight, I hadn't made anything yet. I just focused on oh. doing this. Oh, okay. So that's where that's where I actually I did the sausage because I thought that would be a nice compliment to it. So I, I was going to do chicken, but I didn't. So. All right. Well, before we sign off, uh, tell us again about our charity that everybody can donate to tonight. Yeah, thank you. So Innocent Life Foundation, which is a uh, non-for-profit organization that has uh, actually founded by Chris Hadnagy. Uh, social engineering podcast, uh, no free ads. And uh, the purpose of the, the foundation is to help unmask uh, anonymous online predators and help bring them to justice by assisting law enforcement to help build cases against these individuals. So uh, we posted this the link push that we posted the link earlier. Mm -hmm. Please share with us publicly or DM us. Um, I'll post it right now. Again, yep. so everybody knows. Again. Bryson, this was awesome. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Share what you cook at home. Hashtag Unicorn Chef. We'd love to see because everybody, as you saw tonight, it always comes out different. So we want to see what you do. Catch you next week. <laughs>